Life is seriously full of paradoxes. And here's one of them. We can't win the game of life if we don't take it seriously, but we also can't win if we take it too seriously. So we have to find that beautiful middle ground where we are really leaning in and we're going all in with our energy. And at the same time, we're holding things lightly and we're being willing to play with the universe. So my question for you this week is, if you feel like things are not coming forward for you with the effort you're putting in, take an honest look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I really giving it my all? And conversely, if you're really giving it your all, but you're not having fun on the journey, ask yourself, am I really trusting myself and the process? And that'll let you know what you need to add more of. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. I hope that you're having a great week so far. Wow, it's been an intense little period of time. We just had on Monday, May 16th, that Scorpio full moon plus total lunar eclipse energy. And the messages that came through, of course, were always so strong. Um, but they're really in alignment with this idea of rebirth happening. So we we are, we're in this period of rebirth and that what that looks like is that other, you know, the old systems, the old way of doing things are crumbling, falling apart while a new system is being born. And when we're in the rebirth process, when we're in transformation, a lot of what's coming is actually here but it's more energetically here than viscerally here. And so we can feel it, but we don't see it yet. And that's when, you know, using your intuition, stepping back, being the observer in your life and, and really feeling into what is coming, what is here, is going to help you stay grounded, stay in alignment and stay in your joy. One of the things that has been coming up so much in and things like the spirit circle, but also in private coaching that I've been doing is this idea of holding paradox. And the higher we move in consciousness, the better we become at holding paradox. And paradox is one of those things where it's two seemingly different realities or truths are true at the same time. And you know, our brain our, our brain loves it when things make sense, when it's one way or the other, when it's right or wrong, black and or white, hot or cold. It has a really hard time holding that two opposing things can be true at the same time. One of these areas where that paradox shows up is your inner child, which is fully activated and still with you, and the inner adult, which is also fully activated and still within you. So we've got these two seemingly opposing energies, one that is very playful and filled with joy and wonder and trust and hope, and another that's very grounded, serious, methodical, responsible energy coming through. It'd be very difficult at times to feel like we can inhabit both, but once we start doing it, we actually resolve the paradox and we see how they work together by stepping into both our inner child as well as embodying our inner adult. And we start to see that it's a relationship, right? That the inner adult is actually the parent that the inner child has been waiting to receive. And that actually brings up another paradox that seems to come up and it really came up with the total eclipse, the full moon, which is the paradox around receiving. So we, one of the things that Scorpio teaches us is not only how to give, but how to receive. Scorpio is connected on the axis of, of money and abundance with, with Taurus. So our sun is in Taurus and our, our moon was in Scorpio. And interestingly enough, the node points of the moon, which sort of talk about destiny, are, are in Taurus and Scorpio. So our future is Taurus and our past is Scorpio. So the future... The North Node is the future and it represents what we're destined to achieve and the South Point represents the past and what we need to learn. And one of the lessons that comes up with when we're looking at Scorpio that we need to learn is how to be better at receiving because it's about how um, what is shared. 
So it's not only what we share, but what is shared with us. And it it came about during the spirit circle that we were talking about receiving. And the energy the team talked about was how to ask for what you want without holding on to it too tightly. And they use the metaphor of the fist. So when we're asking for what we want, but we're holding on too tightly, we make a fist. And so whatever it is we're asking for is trapped inside. But that also means that nothing can be received. Like you can't receive anything if your hand is closed. And so the metaphor is really about holding what you desire with an open hand. And that requires a lot of vulnerability and trust. But it also makes it, it like there's so many things that can come to you when you hold energy like this. There's so much that you can receive that not only will you get what you're intending, but there's a windfall. Right? There's a windfall of things that can come in when you hold energy in this way. And so it comes back to the relationship between the inner adult and the inner child, where the inner adult might hold on, the inner child can hold loosely. And yet, if we're having a hard time holding loosely, if we're having a hard time in that being in that place of trust, it means that our inner child has to some degree shut down. It no longer trusts. And, you know, there's a lot of things. This is where shadow work and trauma healing come into play. Because if you want to know what is shutting down your inner child and the ability to hold and be vulnerable and open, that is because the inner child doesn't feel secure. It doesn't feel safe and trusting. And so we know that there's work to be done in that area. When the inner child receives that healing, it starts to receive what it feels it needs, then it really starts to open up and that's when our sense of fun and play come back into our life. And that's one of the ways we win at the game of life. And remember, in this episode, we're talking a lot about paradox. So trusting, having fun and being open to receive is one of the ways we win the game of life. And the other is having that energy of responsibility to our desire, right? So that as soon as we choose something, we start to commit to it. We lean into it and we become consistent and persistent about pursuing the dream. So it's really interesting what we're being asked to hold here. We're, we're being asked to um, create a dream and commit to it seriously with all of our heart while trusting completely that it's going to be taken care of, that there is um, energy surrounding us that desires for us to have our dreams fulfilled and allowing us to commit fully with a sense of play and pleasure and enjoyment as we do it. So the message from the team this week is just to notice, you know, are you stuck in one side of the paradox? Because we're supposed to embody both. We're supposed to embody both. And sometimes if it feels difficult to embody both, whether it feels difficult to really enjoy yourself as you're, you know, committing to creating your dreams, or if it feels hard to get serious about it because you don't want to lose that sense of play. If you haven't found that beautiful divine middle yet, it's letting you know you're kind of on you know, you're lopsided in one side of this paradox or the other. So the questions then become what I talked about at the beginning of the video where we're asking ourselves, am I fully committing? Therefore, the inner adult comes forward and is, you know, it's leaning all the way in, committing to the process and showing up for it consistently. Or am I doing all of that, but I'm, in, I'm just not enjoying the process because I am in a state of a lack of trust I don't believe I'm supported or I don't believe this can be fun or easy or I, I'm viewing it as work rather than as something that um, is being created by me and for me. So find that place for yourself and just ask yourself, what side of this am I, am I lopsided? Am I hanging out in one space more than the other? And then it really becomes about how do I do both? And, you know, I think it... In my personal experience, it seems to sort of like teeter-totter. I guess, it's, yeah, it kind of does that sometimes. As long as you're 
tilting one way and then letting it shift the other direction and you keep going back and forth I think that's kind of how we do it like now I'm seeing like the alchemist right mixing mixing their potion together so it might not and I think there are probably times where we actually find the place where we're really committing and having a great time I think that's possible as well but to to believe that that's the place you have to stay to be able to create this beautiful harmony I think that might be a setup for ourselves. If we think like I have to hit that sweet spot and if I'm in the sweet spot, then I'm doing it. Anything else is not doing it. I think it's that moment where we realize like, you know, there there are just periods in our life where it's it's sort of like the, you know, the story about the ant and the grasshopper, right? So the grasshopper representing the desire to play and the ant representing the desire to be responsible and prepare. And I think that it's finding that beautiful balance where you you do some preparation and then you enjoy, right? You, you move into the place of trust and joy in the process and your effort. And you let that inspire you into the next level of responsibility and preparation. Let me know your thoughts. Have you seen this experience? Do you know what side of that paradox you tend to sit on and how are you going to bring more of each into your life so that you can really win at the game of life and reaching that beautiful destiny that is guaranteed to you. All right, now let's take a look at this week's karma cards. So if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how they work. I've got three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message you have for us this week? And of course, I've got two sets of answers. The one in red are action-related answers, and the set in blue are outcome. And the way that you play is you use your intuition and tune in and feel, what do you need for this week? Are you looking for action-related answers, or do you want to know how things are going to um, work out over the next week. And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're deciding, let me share with you the timing for this reading. This reading is for May 18th through May 25th. And the flavor of this reading is pretty cool. You know, that access point I was talking to you about, about the um, access of abundance and the north and south node with Taurus and Scorpio. Well, they're showing up here. In the cards today. So the planet we have is Venus. Now Pen Venus, <laughs> you catch that? <laughs> now Venus is one of the benefic planets. So whenever she shows up in a card reading, there's always a lot of positive energy behind that. So I love that. In the sign of Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, and this Taurus, remember, represents the North Node, the Destiny energy. And Taurus is, it has a lot of beautiful qualities. You know, it loves art, music, beauty. Um, it's very sensual. It, you know, cares about its environment. It wants to create beauty and luxury wherever it is. It can also be a little obstinate. Uh, it can get a little fixed in, in its mindset. So that's something we're gonna watch out for in the reading. And the house, is the house that Scorpio rules, which is the eighth house. And this is the, you know, death, love and taxes house. It is what we share. It is about intimacy and it definitely connects to intimacy with money and finance as well. So let's see what, this is a basically a money reading right here because Venus also, you know, is the ruler of Taurus, but money is one of her areas that she rules. So I have a sense that money comes up in this reading, but let's check it out. For those who are choosing action, your spiritual action at this time is to cherish your beliefs as a life or death issue. This one's really interesting because our beliefs create our perception of reality. So it's asking you to love your belief system so to cherish your beliefs is to truly honor and love them. And the interesting thing about that is our beliefs can help us and they can hinder us. So I, I even get that with this reading, it's saying love all of them, even the ones that you find hindering. So for example, if you have self-limiting beliefs, before you can shift anything, you must love them. So again, to acknowledge is to see and to accept is to love. Now, I know that this is a part that a lot of people get stuck with because as soon as you see something that you don't 
want anymore. So let's say you're holding a belief about um, lack of worth, right? And you just found that. You're just like, oh my gosh, there it is. I see it, this lack of worth, this, this feeling of not enoughness. And now you're asking me to cherish that as a life or death issue. And the answer is yes, because we cannot change what we don't accept. And to accept something is to is to allow it, allow it to be there, allow it to be present. And it is through love that we have the greatest power of transformation. Um, and a great example of this is, you know, Dr. Masaru Emoto's work where he talks about the, the messages in the water and the power of water and just how much our love heals something. So by being able to look at any belief, whether it's a belief you love already and you fully accept, or a belief you're holding that you don't accept, the way to transform it into something higher is through holding it, holding it and cherishing it with love. So ha ask yourself, you know, it's easy to see how the beliefs that we already accept and appreciate that we have serve us. But now it's time to ask ourselves about the beliefs that we're holding, about how they serve us, the ones that appear to be holding us back. So if you had like, again, a self-worth issue or self-worth belief that was holding you back, how is that belief serving you? Is one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself because it's through that you can find the respect and maybe appreciation and even love for its presence in your life. And through looking at it through that lens, that's the way you're going to be able to transform it into a higher belief, a belief that's going to be more in service to your greatest good. Mental action. Enjoy the costs of getting and using power. This is another, inter There's a, this is so funny, this reading, because it's a little confronting when I listen to it, which is interesting coming from such um, a benevolent place. But just because it's benevolent and high vibrational doesn't mean it isn't going to confront you. Most of the time, that type of energy does. It gets you to look at yourself. So it's saying, enjoy the costs of getting and using power. So in this sense, that power is your ability to create, right? So when we accept our power, we step into our creator being self. And you know, it, we might not ever think about what the cost of that is. So for example, I was talking to someone earlier about having self-love boundaries, where by having self-love boundaries, by saying this is what I accept and this is what I don't accept, that right there is the cost because each of those things has a consequence, whether it's good or bad, it has a consequence. For example, if you're an entrepreneur and you finally start charging what you're worth, there's the cost of getting and using power. When you start charging what you're worth, a couple of things are going to happen. One, you're probably going to be confronted with that feeling of self-doubt and scarcity about people might not buy this if I charge what I'm worth. And to some degree, you will be right. There will be some people who won't buy what you're selling at the cost that you feel matches what your value is. But you've got to see that that's actually a godsend right there because it keeps the people out who aren't a vibrational match to you and truly don't value you at the level that you should be valued. And an, the positive consequence is you will align to the people who see your value. They will recognize the value you hold and they will happily pay you accordingly. So again, it's asking us to enjoy that, enjoy that process that by having those, you know, the things that are going to come into play when we um, have power, one of the major things is boundaries, strong boundaries. The The more powerful you are, the stronger the boundaries you have. Enjoy the process. It's a natural filtering process that happens when you step into that level of creator being power. Physical action at this time. Charm, art, and beauty are the way to use the most direct way and use other people's resources. 
So again, it's like, we're all resources for each other. We are, we, you know, the gifts that we come into this world with, they're not gifts for us. They're the gifts we give. So that's the resource that you have. So whatever your gifts are, whether you're an incredible listener or highly organized or really good at getting right to the heart of the matter, right? Whatever the gifts that you have, those are your resources. And everyone's got some. Everybody's carrying some resources and they're meant for us to tap into each other. Um, and of course, the best way to do that is to find that um, charm, art, and beauty, right? When I hear it, that in relation to other people is really learning how to take a personal interest in someone else. I mean, it's easy when you can recognize someone's resource to want to tap into it. Um, and sometimes we like we need that now. It's like, I, I need your help now. And we can get really direct and forget that there's a person. <laughs> there's a person there. There's a person who also has you know, needs and desires that need to get met. And so it's this idea of understanding you know, um, the win-win. How do we work together? What resources am I carrying that I can share with you, right? And this is this is actually where we're going. This is a, you know, in terms of business, it's called barter. I see it happen all the time. People love that. People love to be able to tap into each other's resources. And as we go higher and higher in consciousness, it really just kind of is the way we work because we start to realize that, the gold mine that's around us is not in the form of currency, but it's in the for, the form of community. It's those around us. Um, and that's really coming out to the forefront right now. So it's just remembering that you, if you want to work with another person's resources, take a personal interest in what their needs are and see how you can bring your resources to the table to directly tap into their resources. All right, let's look at outcomes for Venus in Taurus in the eighth house of shared finance. The spiritual outcome at this time is the attraction of resources to maintain personal power. That goes right into the last statement. So again, resources really in this, it comes from other people predominantly through this reading. Um, so you're going to, by being in this place where you're recognizing your own value, what you're holding, and you're realizing the ability to stand in that power and thereby and understanding what the cost of that is to stand in your power, you're naturally going to attract the resources that you need to maintain that power. And that is so cool. Mental outcome at this time, pleasure from the practicality of the mysteries of life, right? So the mysteries of life are ruled by this eighth house um, that and one of the names for it could be the house of mystery. So that has to do with what I was talking about earlier with this paradox where the fact that it nothing is all one way or the other. Nothing is all give, nothing's all take, nothing's all fun, nothing's all work right? There's this beautiful um, balance. And when you start to just kind of lean into how everything is here together, and sometimes truths feel like they butt up against each other during this week, it feels like we really get to kind of lean into that energy that we sort of enjoy the seesaw, the teeter totter um, that life can create for us sometimes. And it allows us to actually practically create with that energy it really allows us to so we don't have to understand it to be able to fully play in it so that's not actually required of us to fully understand how to resolve all paradox it's like just remember you gotta you gotta um, work really hard sometimes and you've got to play really seriously sometimes and you've got to lighten up and you've got to get serious and you've got to you know you've got to make a decision but you have to hold it lightly and all of these things start to make sense as you do them rather than trying to understand them first physical outcome good times resulting from the productivity of a major change so again we're in this window of transformation that's that's a big thing so that's the major change that this card these cards are talking about 
right now. And it's, it's so interesting because, you know, a lot of times around transformation, there, there is some healing work that comes up and that healing work can be heavy at times. We can get really emotional. It can feel really weighted down or like maybe even feel like I'm not sure if I can get through this. Like I'm not sure if this will ever heal. But they're saying not this week. This week actually the transformation itself is helping you enjoy the process. So something about this is offering us some grace here and it's also creating that productivity that gets us to move forward and get traction on our path as we continue to evolve as a soul. So really the message this week is just like love what you've got, recognize where if you're in balance or out of balance in some area, and just really enjoy the process. You can enjoy the process as you self-correct. And again, that also feels paradoxical because self-correcting, right, means we're also taking a real honest look at ourselves. And traditionally, we don't tend to see that as something that's enjoyable. But the way the energy lines up right now, it is enjoyable. And there is a lot. And, and that actually has to do with some planetary placements. We've got um, Chiron, which is the healing energy. Venus, which is the that loving energy, and Jupiter, which is the joy and expansion, they are all in a stellium together in Aries. And Aries is just that fiery, like, I can do anything energy. So let's enjoy it. We're in this beautiful window of like healing might be fun. It might create joy. You might actually love the process that you're in. And if you're in that space, just ride this wave because it's a really good feeling energy and you're you're really getting momentum towards the direction you desire to go and with that i will see you next week at the next karma cards mm. thank you for watching subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time i release a new video until then stay magical